Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Saturday morning, the 8th of October, 9.15 a.m. We're here in First Chronicles chapter number 27 today. If you're seated somewhere where you can open a Bible, I encourage you to turn there with me. First Chronicles 27, going to cover this chapter. This book has been ending, you've noticed, with the detailed lists of who David put in charge over what, and we have more of that today. This is going to be a list of military men, generals in the army of David. So we've seen the porters, we've seen the Levites, we've seen the musicians. Now we're going to see the military organized. You know, spiritual life is vastly important, and we stress it to a great degree. And We do so because oftentimes it is the most neglected area of our lives. In Luke chapter 2, verse 52, the Lord tells us the four areas in which the Lord Jesus grew. He grew in wisdom, stature, favor with God, and favor with man. So wisdom is intellectually, uh, stature is physically, favor with God is spiritually, and favor with man is socially. So usually, uh, in fact, the lost man, he can grow intellectually, physically, and socially, but he doesn't grow spiritually. Then we get born again, but those old habits of life have us grounded and rooted in tending to the physical world and this world that we live in. And so we have to stress greatly the importance of the spiritual life and the spiritual world. Uh, And so sometimes, if we're not careful, we can even get imbalanced there. Other things need to be tended to as well. You got to take care of your health. You got to take care of yourself physically. You have to uh, take care of feeding your mind and staying strong there. You need to make sure that your earthly relationships and your human relationships are doing well uh, on top of keeping the spiritual side functioning. So what we've seen here is we've talked about the organization of everything. That's David taking care of these matters. Now, you could argue that they're spiritual in nature and they certainly are are in a sense that they lend to the spiritual world succeeding properly. But what we're going to understand is it's just as important for the trash to be taken out at the church as it is for the buses to go out and reach people and bring them in. If you don't take the trash out You've got a garbage dump for a church and nobody's going to want to come and no one's going to want to stay to hear the word of God. So these things are just as important. The bus captain and the bus mechanic are of equal importance. The janitor of the building and the pastor of the building, they both have to do their jobs. If one or the other doesn't do their jobs, then things fall apart on us. Every job is important in the work of God. <clears throat> That's what Paul taught the Corinthians. He said, can the eye say to the hand, I have no need of thee, and vice versa. All right, so let's pray and we'll read the chapter here. Father, thank you for our study. Thank you for what we've accomplished here. The steadfastness, daily faithfulness, working through the Bible. We ask that you'll help us to learn and grow from what we read today. In Christ's name we ask, amen. All right, I assume I'm going to do a lot of reading here without a lot of commentary. Of course, often when I say that, it turns out to be the opposite. Here we go. Now, the children of Israel, after their number, to wit, the chief fathers and captains of thousands and hundreds, and their officers that served the king in any matter of the courses which came in and went out month by month, throughout all months of the year of every course, were 20 and 4,000. So David has 24,000 men that he's put in charge of the military exploits of the nation of Israel on a day-to-day basis. Over the first course for the first month was Jeshobim, the son of Zabdiel, and in his course were 20 and 4,000. Of the children of Perez was the chief of all the captains of the host for the first month. And over the course of the second month was Dodai and Ahohite. And of his course was Mikloth, also the ruler. In his course, likewise, were twenty and four thousand. The third captain of the host for the third month was Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, a chief priest. And in his course were twenty and four thousand. So you see, each man is given twenty four thousand men. Those twenty four thousand men each are given a month with which to pursue active duty for the safety of Israel. 
There are other 11 months of the year they're going to be in training, staying on top of their skills. By the way, this man Benaiah here in verse number 5 is one of the mighty men. If you remember the mighty man who slew the lion in the snow, uh, that was him. Or two Moabites that were lion-like men, that was him. Verse 6, this is that Benaiah, oh, here we go, <laughs> That was who was mighty among the 30 and above the 30. And in his course was... Amizabad, his son. The fourth captain for the fourth month was Asahel, the brother of Joab, and Zebediah, the son after him, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. You remember Asahel was killed by Abner in Second Samuel. Verse number eight, the fifth captain for the fifth month was Shamhuth, the Israelite, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The sixth captain for the sixth month was Ira, the son of Iklash, uh, the Tekoite, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The seventh captain for the seventh month was Helez, the Pelonite of the children of Ephraim, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The eighth captain for the eighth month was Sibachai, the Hushathite of the Zarhites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The ninth captain for the ninth month was Abiezer, the Anatothite of the Benjamites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The tenth captain for the tenth month was Maharai, the Netophathite of the Zarhites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The eleventh captain for the eleventh month was Benaiah, the Parathonite, of the children of Ephraim, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The twelfth captain for the twelfth month was Heldai, the Netophathite of Othniel, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. Furthermore, the tribes of Israel, the ruler of the Reubenites, was Eliezer, the son of Zichri, of the Simeonites, uh, Shephatiah, the son of Maacah, of the Levites, Hashabiah, the son of Kemuel, of the Aaronites, Zadok, of Judah, Elihu, one of the brethren of David, of Issachar, Amri, the son of Michael, of Zebulun, Ishmaiah, the son of Obadiah, of Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael, of the children of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Az- Azaziah, of the tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Padiah, of the half-tribe of Manasseh and Gilead, Edo, the son of Zechariah, of Benjamin, Jaciel, the son of Abner, of Dan, Azareel, the son of Jeroham, These were the princes of the tribes of Israel. All right, so that's the end of the list, I believe. But David took not the number of them from 20 years old and under, because the Lord had said he would increase Israel like to the stars of heaven. So what this means is David didn't get a census taken of those under 20 years of age. Remember when David numbered the people and God plagued Israel for three days and 70,000 people died because David unwisely numbered the people. In numbering the people, he's taking a census to figure out how strong his army is rather than just trusting the Lord to go out and make the difference. So uh, here we've got him not numbering under 20 years of age because he trusted God that God would allow Israel to flourish just like he said he would. Verse number 24, Joab, the son of Zeruiah, began to number But he finished not, because there fell wrath for it against Israel. Neither was the number put in the account of the chronicles of King David. So there was a time when Joab tried to number the people, but he did not. And over the king's treasures was Asmaveth, the son of Adiel. So these are uh, those who are providing security over the spoils of war and the other treasures of Israel. And over the storehouses and the fields, in the cities and in the villages and in the castles was Johanathan, the son of Uzziah. And over them that did the work of the field for tillage of the ground was Ezri, the son of Keleb. And over the vineyards was Shimei, the Ramathite. Over the increase of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi, the shipmite. And over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the low plains was Baal Hanan, the Gedarite. And over the cellars of oil was Joash. And over the herds that fed in Sharon was Shitri, the Sharonite. And over the herds that were in the valleys was Shaphat, the son of Adlai. Over the camels also was Obiel, the Ishmaelite. And over the asses was Jadea, the Maranathite. And over the flocks was Jaziz, the Hagarite. All these were the rulers of the substance, which was King David's. So David put 
a man in charge of each section of his own own his own materials or i don't know what the word it's saturday morning early uh he put a man in charge over each sector of his own assets that's the word i want to use and so he had someone over his his sheep someone over his uh livestock someone over his uh olive trees someone over his vineyards now those men led those areas as stewards those things didn't belong to them they belonged to the king but they managed them uh for him and overall, uh, sorry, in verse 32, and Jonathan, da- also Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a wise man, and a scribe. And Jehiel, the son of Hakmani, was with the king's sons. And Ahithophel was the king's counselor. And Hushai the archite was the king's companion. Of course, we see all that playing out, don't we, in, in the books of Second Samuel. And after Ahithophel was Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah, the, and Abiathar, and the general of the king's army was Joab. And Joab, very loyal to David, not always obedient to David. All right, I'm going to leave you alone with that. Got to get off to our soul winning meeting this morning. Thanks so much for watching. As always, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here. And we will see you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. We record the broadcast and have it played at 8 a.m. on the Lord's Day. So we'll see you then. God bless you. Have a wonderful Saturday.